So Wayfair is the uh, leading online furniture retailer. Any Wayfair shoppers in the house? Oh man, it's good. <laughs> Anybody with a spouse that spends too much money on Wayfair and you don't know what to do about it? Okay, almost the same number, raise the hands. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about today about uh, Boston-based Wayfair, how we went about choosing Aerospike as a database, and how we use it. So we like to describe Wayfair as, you know, really, really think about it as a furniture company. It's more of a technology company that just happens to sell furniture. You know, if you can never touch the sofa or sit on it, how are you going to make people buy it? Technology. So we're spread out all over in that, in that area as far as data science, augmented reality, virtual reality, competitive intelligence. Uh, if we don't like a particular um, software that's out there, we just build our own. Six billion in revenue last year. Uh, 14 million products, and we're 12,000 people, and 2,300 of those are engineers. So we're actually Boston's biggest tech employer, which you probably wouldn't think of from watching our TV commercials. <laughs> we got Wayfair, we got what you need. So here's a graph showing our growth. So it's pretty amazing, over 40% every single year, year after year. So with that comes a lot of challenges with technology and scale. We're hiring like crazy. When I get back, I probably won't recognize half the people. It might be someone sitting in my desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my monitors are gone. Here's a chart I found. I don't know if we use this internally too much, but um, in this sense, but I found this on Motley Fool and I thought it was kind of interesting as far as showing the turnover of inventory as far as cost of uh, goods sold divided by the cost of inventory we have on hand. And as you can see, we do pretty good as far as turning over that inventory compared to Restoration Hardware, Home Depot, and Amazon. And once again, we do that with a bunch of technology. So why did we even need to consider a database uh, like Aerospike? Uh, the main use was for our ad tech group. They need a lot of data and they need it fast. So, and we, right now, a lot of the data is on an outdated Redis environment uh, that doesn't get too much love. So we're trying to find a replacement. We looked at Cassandra and I love Cassandra. I've implemented it at numerous com uh, companies, but was it the right choice for our ad tech uh, use case? So we were looking for something with low latency Reliable, scalable, like mostly everyone is looking for. Something that's manageable, not too much configuration or tuning, not too much uh, detailed employee knowledge. And we're looking for a partnership with a company that we could build with that would supp uh, support us and understand our immense growth. So unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to Cassandra. We, we talked to a lot of ad tech companies and they all said, you'll be use Aerospike. So I was asked to take a look at it, uh, looked awesome. I said, this is great, why aren't we using it? It was really good. So some things we run into with Cassandra, there's a lot more configuration and tuning out of the box. Uh, Aerospike pretty much changed a few things and you're, and you're good to go. Uh, you have to tune the JVM. New hires, it's very difficult to find people that are skilled in Cassandra and know all the ins and outs. Number of servers, as I'll show a little bit later, is much higher. And due to the limited amount of data you can put on each node, it's not going to um, scale vertically too good, only horizontally. And la latency-wise, we could get nowhere near what we could get with Aerospike. So once we started, once we instead went to Aerospike, the uh, number of servers went from 60 to 7. And what we do as an exercise most of the time with different um, software and hardware is we calculate what's the cost over three years as far as licensing, hardware, operational, the data center. Uh, we come out with a dollar amount of that. Aerospike, even with the licensing fees, came out lower than Cassandra due to the amount of servers and also was much faster on the reads and the writes. So after that, we decided, hey, let's form a group to manage the Aerospike platform. 
our parent group is Distributed Systems, which kind of operates as a startup within a startup at, at Wayfair. So we try to get other groups to come on to our platform and support them with the model of more, faster. And then within that, we have the high scalability NoSQL group, uh, which I'm on. And the other groups don't seem to like us too much because we never get any red alerts or anything else. Nothing goes down. They kind of hate us for that. Um, it's all run on two, two full-time engineers. So it's me, replication factor two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never. <laughs> so, uh, two full-time engineers running the entire Aerospike uh, platform. Uh, and our role is obviously to keep it going, and then we meet and talk with other groups within Wayfair to see if their um, either existing use case or their new project is a good uh, fit for Aerospike. Uh, we work on automating configuration and reporting, and we're always thinking ahead. So we always, I have like a spreadsheet of all the namespaces, what we would lose in memory or disk space if we doubled or we tripled, punch in numbers. Uh, we're growing so fast, we have to expect that, hey, in a couple months we could double data. Will we have enough RAM? Will we have enough disk space? So continually looking at that kind of makes it look easy as far as nothing going wrong. And we've been using it about a year now, so one year later, uh, AdTech, the group itself, has grown considerably. In the last five years, they've grown from 10 to 95 engineers, managing uh, millions of dollars in ad spend. Those guys do a great job. They know what you want to buy before you know what you want to buy. Uh, so they do, we do a lot of um, ad networks as far as bidding on ads. Uh, you know, if you're a Wayfair, and you go to another site, are you worth it to display another ad? So maybe if you're looking at dining room tables and the price is right, we display an ad to you. If you're looking at maybe garden gnomes, maybe you're not worth it. Uh, what we store in Aerospike for, for ad tech is majority is purchase SKUs, viewed categories, favorited items, and then we take that data, calculate a customer score and segment customers, and then that data is used for different, other different services. As you can see, Aerospike is pretty much the heart of everything we do in ad tech at Wayfair. A lot relies on it. All the uh, activity comes in from the site, into the queue, into the Aerospike, and then into different various other applications. I'll go over some of these in a minute uh, that use that data for their workload. So besides ad tech and or in addition to some other groups, uh, recommendations. So recommendations takes that data, compares it with, with other information, and decides to recommend products for you. Uh, Scribe tracks all the events on the sites, and that's written to Aerospike. Gray Matter uh, listens to all stream of events. That's kind of like a self-service that other groups can uh, employ. You know, A plus B equals C, then do this. So if you haven't been to the site in two weeks, you were looking at mattresses, we're having a sale on mattresses, Let's send out a push to your, to your app notification. WayUp uh, allows suppliers to bid on their product placement on the site. So if a supplier makes a sofa and they want it at the top of the category, they can bid on that. We started storing the product catalog for other apps that need to search product information. That takes a lot of load off of our solar cluster. And a 3D room planner um, stores uh, coordinated room items and coordinates. So we're in the process of basically 3Ding every single product that's on the site, either manually or, autom or automated. So about two years ago, uh, someone came up with the idea of Wayday, which would be our own special kind of Black Friday, Cyber Monday type sales, but in April. And engineering said, wait a second. I thought, you know, I thought Cyber Monday was the only day we had to sleep at our desk. So, we didn't really know what to expect. We thought maybe it might be the same amount of, of sales as Black Friday, maybe it might be a little lower. It ended up being three times what we thought it would be. So it was a genius idea. There's no competition, middle of April, deep discounts on products. And that really put our infrastructure to the test. I mean, Aerospike was okay, but other systems uh, were really uh, hammered with the amount of traffic. So we made a decision to be able to burst that storefront traffic into the cloud for the next way day. 
And we're, and we're successful at that. We're able to turn off uh, the on-prem and serve everything directly from the cloud. And this year's wait is just happened April 10th. Little overview of our infrastructure there. So we have on-prem data centers in Boston and Seattle. Seven nodes, bare metal there. Dell PowerEdge servers. We use the Micron 9200 Max Drive, super super fast. Never had a problem with it with that setup. And then we XDR to the Google Cloud. Those four data centers, 12 nodes each. Uh, we don't really XDR to Europe since we don't need U.S. data in Europe, and it just writes locally there. Over there, we do do we use the local SSDs and the AeroSpike Shadow. Um, option. So local SSDs on, on Google, if the instance is shut down or restarted, you lose that drive, you lose all that data. So the shadow function allows you to mirror that data to a shadow drive. When you bring back up your instance, it moves the data back to the local SSDs. And that really does work. We've done it several times. So an individual on-prem cluster kind of looks like this. As far as uh, number of nodes, this space, we average about 100K reads, 20K a second, uh, burst occasionally to 1 million, and pretty much all the latency under 1 millisecond. For automation, everything is done via Puppet, so nothing is touched by hand. Puppet makes it really easy as far as configuration changes or server changes. Everything is done in one single file, automatically pushed out to all the servers, Puppet runs, rewrites the um, Aerospike configuration file. For the cloud, we use Terraform as you know, infrastructure as code. Kind of the same thing, one configuration file, define your number of instances, the type, the drives. If you wanted to, just press a button, you can create a whole another data center with say 10 nodes. For monitoring, we use, we use AMC a lot, and we also use uh, Datadog. It just gives us a little more finer detail as far as writes per namespace, XDR, um, statistics, and of course, alerts and monitoring. So a funny thing happens when you turn on authentication on Aerospike, Datadog agent doesn't work because it can't get any information. Uh, so we had to work with, we worked with Aerospike and Datadog to rewrite the agent so that it would work with authentication and be able to log in as a client to Aerospike to gather statistics. And in the meantime, I said, well, why don't you just make Aerospike a default integration on Datadog? So when you go to Datadog menu, there's a bunch of fancy icons. You just push one and bam, you have that integration. Uh, so now in the not too distant future, the Datadog, uh, Aerospike will be a default in integration on Datadog and they'll use our dashboards that we've created as the default uh, that you'll receive when you install that integration. A couple of things we learned along the way. Uh, you know, one namespace or a bunch of namespaces. So we originally started out doing several namespaces just so we could, we could report on reads and writes. But whatever resources you assign that namespace, it's use or lose for, that, for them, not available to other customers. Uh, in a perfect world, it's easier to do one namespace and throw everything at it. Primary indexes take up a lot of memory, uh, which I guess we should have been aware of, but um, we're able to work around it. But it, it does take up a lot when you have billions of records. Plan ahead for uh, other groups, uh, as far as like the spreadsheet I was talking about. And a lot of things that I'm sure everyone's run into as far as key busy errors, record too big, batch read limits, but those are all pretty much solvable with a different um, modifying your data model. And this was kind of touched on in another talk, um, but it's kind of cool as far as we originally had everything on VMs, and then once our hardware arrived, we needed to shut down the VMs and run everything on bare metal. So using Rack awareness, 
You leave the original one at where it's at, all the new nodes come on as a new rack. And in that sense, Aerospike will never store a master and a replica in the same rack. It copies over to the new servers. Once the migrations are done, you point all the clients at the new cluster and shut down the original cluster. Want to give a shout out to Aerospike support. They've, uh, they've been amazing. We kind of use them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like they said this morning, you know, read the documentation. We always read the documentation first, and we try things on dev, but then if it's something kind of dangerous, we say, hey, you know, we're going to about to do this in prod. What do you think? So it's good to run, run past ideas past them. Uh, an example was a really good example there, excellent support. I mean, and they get back to us like in a couple minutes every single time. A really good example was the Sunday before Cyber Monday. Uh, we were all online monitoring things. XDR started to back up to the Google Cloud. I pretty much knew it was an Aerospike. You know, it had to be the network, right? It's always the network. Um, but we just wanted to make sure. So we ran this past support. They came back with, with like in a 15, 20 minutes, the full two-page report, analysis of you know, where the, where the um, slowdown was in the network. And it really helped us out a lot. And it also proved to other people in the company, hey, Aerospike, uh, really excellent at their support. And as the commercial says, Wayfair and done. That's it. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, we take it slowly, obviously, and you know we talk to the group. Oh, sorry. So with our immense growth, how are we managing a bunch of new groups coming on to Aerospike um, all the time? So we take it slowly as far as interviewing the group, seeing first if it's even a good case, right? If they're doing ad hoc queries, then no, it's not a good case, and we can't put you on there. Um, so we take, a, we take into account the amount of data they have, um, their use case. Can we just run it off the cloud? Uh, so one by one, we're adding them on. Anybody else? Oh. All right, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>